Funky Monkey. Welcome to Hey my... Funky Monkey, the heroes, are you doing the Avengers? You're an episode early. Thanks for giving away that little secret. And can I at least finish me intro first? Oh, <laughs> sorry there, la. Um, carry on. Right, so, hey folks, I'm Funky Monkey, welcome to my house of love, yada yada yada. And yes, the end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's second phase is coming very soon, and so we really should make progress toward talking about the end of the first phase. To this end, I give you the Eagle of the East and Warrior of the West, the Shining Hope, the Man Out of Time, the First Avenger himself, Captain America. <laughs> Released in July 2011, Captain America The First Avenger tells the origin story of a scrawny but almost suicidally gutsy young fellow who doesn't like bullies and the triumphs of science and tragedies of circumstance that turned him into the star-spangled Nazi-punching legend he is today. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the final step on the road to the Avengers. Captain America. Meet Steve Rogers. He's not very big, but he's very brave. Start the cartoon! Hey, you wanna shut up? Braver than I'd be in that situation. But then, British reserve is a terrible thing sometimes. Picky, he's not very handy with his fists. Hey, pick on somebody your own size. The soldier is Bucky Barnes. Cap's best friend. Of course, in the original comic books of the 1940s, Bucky was Cap's kid's sidekick. But nobody uses kid sidekicks these days, for whatever reasons. But he's determined to make the grade. Which he does, thanks to Dr. Abraham Erskine. There are already so many big men fighting this war. Maybe what we need now is a little guy. And one agent, Peggy Carter. Grenade! Get away! The consummate warrior has both courage and conscience. But then again, over here we've been training our lads with that since the year dot. And of course, the fateful day. In more ways than one. Ladies and gentlemen, a moment for Dr. Erskine. Okay. Are the rumours true? Are you doing the adventures? Next episode. Also, I was having a moment for Dr. Erskine, who just died. Oh, 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 terribly sorry to say that. Wait, you're doing Captain America now? I guess that makes sense. The assassin flees, but Steve pursues. On foot? On the roof? And even underwater. But there's only one escape for a captured spy. Hydra, Cobra, Mumra. Whatever has the ancient sun god Ra to do with all this evil? Maybe Linkara was right about ancient Egypt all along. One Johann Schmidt, head of Nazi science think tank Hydra, has harnessed the power of a cosmic item, and plans to turn it against his enemies. We both knew Hydra could grow no further in Hitler's shadow. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, laid bare for all to see. Trust. Without it, you'll never get very far at all. Back in the US, Private Rogers has received quite the promotion. You don't take a soldier, a symbol like that, and hide him in a lab. Even if that's not entirely how he sees it. He's bing bang boom. You're an American hero. Though he does get to punch out Hitler. <laughs> and really, who can complain when your job is punching out Hitler? But the nascent Caps promotion effort doesn't go down well with the actual troops. And worse, our hero receives some bad news about his best pal, Bucky Barnes. 
and his beloved 107th division. I'm sorry. But Cappy's bad at taking no for an answer. Correctly, you got some place to be in 30 minutes. Yes, sir, I do. And so, from behind enemy lines, Cap infiltrates Hydra and frees the fighting 107th. But Schmidt is having none of it and blows the factory. What are you doing? Our forces are outmatched. In the chaos, and in helping Bucky escape. I thought you were dead. I thought you were smaller. We meet the Red Skull. Who escapes this encounter? Nazis. Terrible fascists, but undeniably stylish in their ways. Back at camp, the mood is sour, but shock! To them at least, everyone's alive! And so the SSR and Cap's howling commandos relocate to London, and royally ruin Hydra's plans. But not everything goes their way. Now this is where we'd have a moment for Bucky. But for one, I'm not risking the interruption, and for two... Well... Spoilers. In spite of these setbacks, Dr Zola, Hydra's chief scientist, is taken alive. And makes a deal for his life. This will make a lot of people very angry, have a lot of negative implications in the sequel, and will come to be widely regarded as a bad move. Also, it will be the indirect cause of many, many, many internet arguments. But what it also does is give Cap the location of Hydra HQ. It's not like we can just knock on the front door. Why not? And just in time, as the Red Skull has an airborne superweapon just waiting to take off. The Howling Commandos battle their way into the weapon's hangar. But oh dear, it's taking off! Luckily, the Red Skull's custom soft top is more than capable of keeping up. In the weapon's cockpit, Cap and the Red Skull square off. The power of the Tesseract is the Red Skull's undoing. But there's still the little matter of landing this super weapon somewhere far from harm. Right now I'm in the middle of nowhere. If I wait any longer, a lot of people are gonna die. Cap and Peggy say their goodbyes, and the weapon crash lands in the Arctic. And so the Allies win the war, and all seems well. Cut to 70 years later, as a thawed Cap discovers just how late he is for his date. So that was Captain America. And come on, did you really hey, think buddy. I was going to- Heard you were doing Avengers next week. I have a little bit of experience with superheroes. Can I get in on that? Soundbite? I thought you were dead. Oh wait, yeah, Muppet Wish Day, yeah, of course. Sorry. I've not been keeping up. I've been uh, replaced by a pirate these last few months. But anyway, yeah, I would be honoured for you to be part of my Avengers review. Nice. So, Captain America, is it worthy of the House of Love? You know what? I think it is. Let's get the negatives out of the way first. The plot is paper thin, the MacGuffin is barely used, and more than once scenes seem to go nowhere. Of course, any follower of the MCU will know by now that these scenes have much more weight because of what came after them. As to the film itself, it's the performances that make it. Chris Evans as a digitally smallified pre-cap shows heart and earnestness in wanting so much to follow in the footsteps of his parents. Tommy Lee Jones steals a hefty proportion of the best lines as the curmudgeonly Colonel Phillips. Hayley Atwell's Agent Carter is exceptional and was even enough to warrant her own spin-off. Hugo Weaving's Red Skull is more one note. Another sneering superior villain, but I suppose it pays the bills. And we have to mention the effects, as they were a vital part of this movie, especially in creating the illusion of Chris Evans as a skinny, 90-pound sketch artist from Brooklyn, and how science transformed him into a peak human specimen. All in all then, this movie, even judged on its own merits, might not be magnificent, but it's got plenty of action, sass, 
and Hitler punching. And that's more than enough for me. More than enough, that is, until the Avengers hits. But before we get to that, join me next week as I discuss the missing chapter in the Road to the Avengers, The Incredible Hulk. Until then, I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days and great entertainment. So long, folks! Join the heroic legion of Patreon subscribers today! You could get your name in the credits, early access to new episodes, request your favourite game, movie or anime to be reviewed, or even be in the show yourself. Sign up at my Patreon site. I'll see you there!